Estate regenerations often get a bad press, and too often they've been badly done. But each regeneration story is different. The story of the Woodbury Down Estate in Hackney tells us important things about how to do them well. And we sort of moved in here and we'd been here for sort of a couple of weeks. We could say, my God, you know, how did we live in the old place, right? I love this community, born and bred in it. So, um, yeah, it's by way of giving things back for being here. And it's, it's to love, it's nice to see the change and you think, I was part of that. I'm making the improvements for my children, other people's children to come along. The majority of the people really, when you see, they will come back to you and say to you like, look, you know, I wouldn't go back to the old flat town. The history of the Woodbury Down Estate begins with a compulsory purchase in the 1930s by the old London County Council. The area was considered rather smart and there was strong opposition. But by 1962, nearly 60 blocks of flats had been built on the 60-odd acres of land. The 2,500 homes there comprised one of London's biggest and best new housing estates. Jeff and his partner were rehoused there by the long disbanded Greater London Council from a fire station in Finsbury Park where they were squatting. It was a really nice place. I mean, we'd be down, you know, I mean, it's got this sort of, you know, as I say, people say, dump the state. But I mean, it was never really like that, you know. Um, and it was a really pleasant place to bring up kids because we had the primary school round the corner. There was a sort of doctor's surgery there. There were shops. Um, there was a local sort of dentist. So everything was, everything was sort of there, you know, for us. Billy moved in to look after his dad. I moved to Woodbury down when my mum died. Did you move into the flat that you... Well, I did because my dad wasn't very well able to look after himself or anything, you know. And, and uh, I think his cooking skills was just about uh, making a sandwich and, and that was it. So I had to, you know, try to, you know, help him in, in that way. And he, he developed Alzheimer's, which was, uh, you know, a terrible thing to see someone that, you know, was so able to not look after himself in cooking wise but every other way he was and I mean just disintegrated like you know so I, I took the flat over then at Ashdale House and uh, I become a tenant and uh, you know I was about 20 years ago now. By then sadly some now familiar problems had appeared in some of the homes. When I moved in it was lovely uh, and then we started to get damp and then we had issues with a leak from the flat above, uh, which was a leaseholder. So we had a lot of trouble of getting in, finding him, that sort of thing. And it took up to two years to get the repairs done to eventually, I almost had a breakdown with it all. It was impossible to, to stop the dam coming. And I mean, I, uh, it got, you know, near an impossible to heat. You were all the time fighting even the smell of dampness in the flat, you know, off your clothes and everything in the finish. And I mean, people next door were the same and, you know, the people in the first, first floor were, the, you know, so the, the dampness could, was like creeping all the time. The winter periods can get very cold and so your gas bill can be quite high. That is the downside of living in an old property made of brick. Around the turn of the century, Hackney Council addressed a predicament faced by many councils in London and elsewhere. Thousands of its tenants were living in poor conditions that nothing seemed to fix. One of the flats we were living in, we had new kitchens, we had new bathrooms, we had double, double glazing, so on and so on. But there was still damp, it was still damp, you know. And because, you know, the things had been built, you know, 40, 50 years ago, you know, it was past their sale by idea. Which would be the better course of action? A costly refurbishment might enable people to stay in their homes, but would it work? Would it be better for residents and others if the original Woodbury Down was demolished and a new one built in its place? So you can't say refurbishment always best or you can't say regeneration is always best. You have to look at the uh, circumstances. The way the council argued it, 
Um, and although I wasn't involved in this at the time, but I mean, the way they counseled the argument is that they didn't have the money to refurbish 2,000 homes because at, at through, and through those days, councils simply didn't have the finance to actually do that, right? And it was cheaper for them to um, start again, right? So they, then the question became how you did it. Hackney Council decided to go for a comprehensive regeneration, but that wasn't something they could do alone. So in 2005, they tied up with property development giant Barclay Homes to deliver a master plan for a new estate. Barclay's boss is Tony Pidgeley. What is his approach to such projects? Just about being honest and decent, talking to people, understanding the people's aspirations, what they want, treating them as equals. What does Hackney's Mayor Philip Glanville think of Barclay's contribution? And I'm really pleased that actually they understand that this is a real community and actually this is a place that's got a sort of beating community heart. The full partnership though took time to evolve. When the world financial crisis meant a financial rethink, it also created an opportunity for residents to become more involved. So they wanted to increase the amount of private homes on the estate as a huge tower, right, in order to, so they could afford to sort of build the council homes. That was, that was sort of the idea. So um, they asked us what we thought of that. And I suppose we used that occasion to say, well, let's look now how the regeneration has progressed to date and what are the good things and what are the bad things. The Woodco group said they would oppose the new master plan. The upshot was a written understanding that certain principles should be adopted, such as making sure future social housing tenants got a fair share of lovely views of the restored local reservoirs and nearby parkland. And not everyone wants their flat laid out in the same way. One of the classic sort of examples of this was that was this whole question of uh, open plan or, or separate kitchens, right? Because the the whole idea modern day sort of architects if they're building homes for for today they're building homes for sort of uh, people in their 20s and 30s who want to buy homes right and they like the idea of open plan kitchens right open plan kitchens and living rooms now the people we were representing were 40 50 60 years old who've always had a separate kitchen right and 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 want that in their new home. Meetings with Barclay people were, it seems, a learning process on all sides. And I said to them, have you got a social scientist here? And they all sort of looked at me and, 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 and started laughing, you know, said, well, what do we need a social scientist for, you know? And so it, we actually never had a social scientist in the end, but, um, but the point I'm sort of making is that that that's the sort of thing you have to think about from the very start, right? And, and, and the negotiations went on for quite a long time. All I wanted to talk about was what sort of build, how the buildings were going to be built and, you know, uh, what sort of materials they were going to use and what the heights were going to be and what the massing was going to be, all of which was important and all of which we can attribute it to. But we said we want to look at the broader picture. We want to look at how you build a, 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 a integrated community, you know. Um, and that, I think, and slowly they came round to that idea. Jeff is first class. He has his, his, he has his views. He's a good negotiator. But he has a voice. He represents the people. So why wouldn't we talk to him? Of course, Tony Pidgeley himself comes from a sort of working class background, right? You know, you know. Uh, and so on and so on and 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 I mean he hasn't he hasn't somebody who was born with a silver spoon in his mouth right you know so so um, we actually get on very well right um, uh, but that doesn't mean he gives in to everything I want or I give in then sort of he want you know but I mean he is he's a he's a very interesting character to sort of uh, talk to and work with you know all the organisations concerned with shaping the regeneration. Woodco, Barclays, Notting Hill Genesis Housing Association and Hackney Council now seem pretty pleased with it. Of course, there have been some testing times. I think the worst moment we ever had is that we were going to build a swimming pool here and Jeff summoned us 
and indeed the mayor did and pointed out to us that that swimming well wasn't for everybody. Because they build these big private blocks and they've got uh, a private swimming pool or a private gym at the, uh, in the ground floor of these blocks, right? And um, we said, well, I mean, they built two of them and we said, well, we don't want any more because this is not a balanced and integrated community if you have private leisure facilities. We made a mistake, we listened, we put that right. People like that tend to be tend to be surrounded by yes people, right? So I go in and we had this argument with the gym and the swimming pool, face to face, right? Him and me, right? Uh, uh, once or twice. And I says, no, no, we're not having this, right? And I think um, that was something which actually he and joyed in the end almost you know here was he well how can we how, how am i going to figure this out the result we came to a compromise we listened to their voice so that's what it's about and i suspect that was a turning point for them because we did listen we did take on board their comments and we changed it that if you like was a compromise from them and a compromise for us right so they got but at the same time they have promised there will be no more there will be no more private swimming pools from this point onwards no more right um so those are the sort of things we you know we have been doing right yeah and 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 again you say you sort of say to yourself well is this the price worth worth the uh, worth paying okay let them have their there's sort of three lanes swimming pool, which that's all it is. I mean, you know, even if in, in return we can have increased community facilities for everybody. So those are the sort of judgments we have to make all the time. All partnerships have tensions, I'm sure, you know, whether it's council resident, resident Barclay, Barclay council, but actually uh, it's, a, it's been really positive, I think, in terms of what, we, what we're trying to achieve. And 10 years on, we're still a partnership. I've always said it wasn't the community that was sort of broken at Woodbury Down, it was the quality of the home. You had a community that is still here and really passionate about the place, let down by chronic underfunding of social housing over numerous decades. And it had many of the positive things of that, that welfare state vision of, of the mid 20th century. You know, it had one of the first NHS health centres, a new primary school, new secondary school, community facilities, so that that civic pride, but by the time we'd reached the, the late 1990s, that had failed. We're sat in the Redmond Community Centre with the beautiful views of the West Reservoir behind us. Above us is social housing overlooking that reservoir. If you look at how it approaches the reservoir now, the increase in greens, public green space and private amenity space, all the things that we know are valuable to a community, uh, and actually an increase in, in you know, retail and uh, a brand new secondary school, new children's centre, new community centre, all of those other things have sort of gone in uh, as well. Um, but that wouldn't have been possible without going for that wholesale regeneration. My personal view, I would have loved it to stay the old way. Um, but yes, yeah, some of the uh, flats were in absolute appalling states that couldn't be salvaged. So in the long run, it would be beneficial for everyone to go into a new build. I would prefer if it was a, a development like uh, done by the council but that was not the way it could be done because at that time the council couldn't borrow the same as they can do now. There is room for improvement at Woodbury Down. We're, we're doing alright. It is phase three. Phase three hadn't started yet. I think phase three is going to be better than what's going on. There's a lot of things like that we have lessons learned now. They all have concerns. It can be a young mother with a child. What does she want? She wants to feel safe. She wants somewhere for her child to play. Where does the senior citizens want to go? They want to go to a park and do something to, and sit in a seat and be able to read their newspaper quietly. So everybody wants to feel secure. Everybody wants to feel that they're part of the regeneration. And you know, our job is to make sure they are part of it, to make sure they've got that voice. Jackie, who was born on Woodbury Down and has lived there all her life, hasn't yet been rehoused. Even so, she's been very active in the regeneration process. I thought I'd go along to a meeting and I went and, and then I thought, 
okay, I want to join this, I want to be part of this, so I can bring some stuff back to the people where I live. So I went on to the design committee, which I, I finally enjoyed, designing the flats, the layout of the flats. And because um, and I have children with disability, I had a different eye to maybe many of the other team members. My son, James, he's, um, he works for Berkeley's, yeah, he's on an apprenticeship, two year apprenticeship, which he's finally enjoying. Um, and they're an, quite an amazing company to work for. Um, they give him a lot of support, they even give me a lot of support. They come and talk to me quite a lot about my son and how he's progressing. And what about established residents of Woodbury Down as a whole? How are they feeling about the new homes on the estate and the old? I do actually know people that would prefer to be in the old blocks, even though that they're damp and all that, because they're, they're that type, they're, they're, they would prefer to be in there and in the dampness than to be in the new ones. The majority of the people really, when you see, they will come back to you and say to you like, look, you know, I wouldn't go back to the old flat now. If I've heard people say, oh, it's sort of terrible, that people had to move and so on and so on. The day we were, I mean, the only question people really, most people I would say, and would be down say, it's not said, is, can we move? When can we move? Because they see the new places going up. They know these places are nice. Well.